Hello, I'm Regina McCann Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management, and welcome to our Women in Wealth series. Today, we have a new friend with us. And Shannon, can you tell us who you are, what you do, and what you love about what you do? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Regina. I'm Shannon Brooks. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm a fractional COO. So I work with business owners and leadership teams in small and medium-sized companies who are in that space where they are trying to turn their vision into action. I help them bring that action plan together. And part of what I love about what I do is no two situations are the same. So every company, every challenge, every vision has its own unique landscape that then you figure out what those pieces are and, and how to bring that vision to a reality, whether it is financial considerations, people, processes, any number of things. I love that challenge. That that sounds fun. It's almost like kind of what I, I attribute my financial planning to uh, a jigsaw puzzle. Like you, you have all these pieces and you put them together and then you take them apart and you realign them and make a different picture. Um, I don't know if that's kind of how you would uh, describe some of what you do. Absolutely. Uh, it is kind of putting that puzzle together. And, and I use kind of an analogy of a house sometimes. It's putting together that foundational base that then frees you up to focus on the work, focus on your customers, focus on your employees, and focus on the things that are really going to impact your business because some of that foundational information is planned out. Things are forecasted, budgets are set. You know, some of those processes are in place to increase efficiency. So you don't have that decision-making fatigue that can often overwhelm a lot of us in any given situation, especially small businesses The the to-do list never ends. <laughs> it does not spoken like an entrepreneur of a small business it doesn't end. <laughs> yep. So, um, so tell me a little bit about like some of the, maybe some of the areas of industries that you like working with, or, you know, some of the impact you've had. I, I'm just very curious to learn a little bit more. Absolutely. So I have worked primarily with service providing industries. I have a, a long history with advertising and marketing companies, CPAs, lawyers, doctors, um, some software companies that have been starting. And really some of the, the most fun I've had and some of the biggest impact I've been able to uh, help be part of is one example is saving a company $40,000 a month in their monthly expenses. Wow. And, Sometimes it's it's kind of going through the first part of that growth phase. They, in particular, had had gone through a growth spurt, kind of unplanned. So they were just kind of adding things as they needed things, and nobody was really sitting down and looking through what all of those expenses were and really assessing what are we getting out of it? Are we paying for duplicate tools in some situations? maximizing the negotiations on some of the subscriptions. Hey, we've added more people. Let's get a better deal. A combination of all of those things. So you sit down and you look at that list and you start to piece apart. Okay, what do our customers need today? What are our projects requiring today? What are we really utilizing? And then let's see how we can maximize that. And then when you have $40,000 a month in savings from an operational perspective, there's a lot of opportunity. Oh, you can God, yeah. in the company, you can hire more resources, you can provide benefits and cultural additions to the company that especially in a market like today, where we're living on the other side of what they're calling the great resignation, that employee retention is so important to be able to really support your uh, employees so they can support their customers. I think it was, um, oh, now I can't remember who said it, um, but they said, you know, I support my employees so they can support my customers. And I think that is kind of the foundation of that. And that's a, that's a great outlook for any business owner, entrepreneur or not to have that outlook about their employees, because, you know, you have your clients and your employees have to be happy uh, and on the team for them to be able to do a good job for your clients. Absolutely. And especially as small companies scale, you can't, you may have been doing more of it as a business owner, or part of a leadership team, you're much more hands-on in the early stages, but as you scale, you have to be able 
to step back and you have to trust that your employees are those representatives that you intend for your customers so that the experience doesn't change. And if anything, it, it enhances right. as it continues to grow. Right. Um, and so operationally, there are ways that you can support that through processes and trainings and, and various things. But that is the scalability side of it. You've got to make sure that your team is solid and feels invested and cared for and is really on board with what your vision is to then translate that to your customers and continue to grow. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. Now, when would a company bring you on for your services? At what so stage? Lot, yep. So a lot of times it's in a growth stage. Uh, the sooner in that growth stage, the better, especially if there's planned growth, even better. Mm-hmm. If there's a product launch or you know some expansion of services, I can really help set up the planning for that, the forecasting of some of that, what kind of resources are gonna be needed so that it's a sustainable growth. Uh, In this environment recently, I'm working with a number of clients who have been fortunate enough to find themselves with more work in the midst of everything. They've pivoted well and been able to increase their client base, but it kind of happened. So now here we are saying, okay, great. So how are we gonna get all this work done? So that is also a time where I can come in and and take a look at the landscape and really figure out, okay, how are we going to get this done? How are we going to get this done short term? And how do we build that into something continuously scalable? So it it can have a a short term and a long term view. You just have to be careful that you have more than just the short term, short term view so that it is a sustainable growth. Yeah. And I have in a couple of cases worked with companies that are in rebuilding phases. Sometimes something happens and somebody needs to to pivot a little bit, whether it is financially or resources or, you know, just take a different tack. Maybe there's a different way to use some of what you're providing already in a different sector. And I've helped some companies do that, too, and turn around, um, quite frankly, their finances, uh, paying down debt and six figures in some cases and things like that as they have been turned into a growth cycle. Well, that's pretty impressive. It, it's not easy, I won't lie, but it's, it, that's part of the fun for me. That is a, a different challenge that uh, I enjoy. And at the end of the day, you're working with people who they started a company for a reason. They have a passion for what they're trying to do and to help them see that vision turn into a reality is unbelievably rewarding for me. And then them feeling good about their company makes them really good employers so that then their employees have a good company to work for. And a lot of times working with small businesses, they're also connected to the community. So then they're good community contributors. And it has that ripple effect where uh, a rising tide raises all ships. I believe that that's kind of how small businesses work a lot of time in communities. So I, I love the potential of that as you see a company really thrive. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, I love that visual of the, of the ship, the rising tide that that's a great visual. Thank you. Helps everyone. (laughs) So how would, if somebody wanted to reach out to you, find out more about your services, find out more about your business, how would they find you? There are a couple of ways. You can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Shannon Brooks in the Atlanta, Georgia area. I think Shannon Brooks is a relatively common name. Uh, (laughs) You can also find me on my website, shannonbrooksconsulting.com. So those are a couple of really easy ways to find me. You can also reach out to me directly, Shannon at shannonbrooksconsulting.com. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. So now, um, obviously we are both professional women. We've had our careers. I, I like asking this question because we all have different experiences, but what are some of the challenges that you have faced as a professional woman? Mm Mm-hmm. So I would say the biggest challenge, especially in what I do now, is trust. Having people really, because you're kind of stepping into their space and looking under the hood and asking a lot of questions. So building that trust so that people really feel like you are invested in their success and they want to share that information with you. And quite frankly, trust that you can do what you say you can do. Because in some cases, to to tell a company, I can help you pay down six figures worth of debt, um, 
could seem like, oh, well, that, okay, can you? <laughs> um, so really building that trust is paramount. Um, and I, I have dual degrees actually in marketing and psychology. And I've said my entire career, I got my first job because of my marketing degree. And I have stayed employed and sane all of my life because of my psychology degree. So really understanding what people's pain points are and, uh, and being able to help them address that. As a woman, the other interesting part is I've done a lot of hiring as part of my career. Um, and part of the challenge there is helping women see their value so that they are in the room too. Helping women understand what their salary worth is, helping women understand that even though you may not know how to do everything on a job description, you should apply for the job anyway trust that you are smart enough to fill in the gaps that are left and really elevate that um, from a, an operational head perspective and from a leadership perspective. Sometimes it's even just getting them to, to trust in their abilities, to have that confidence to stand in the room and say, here's what I think, here's, you know, here's the work that I did, here's why I did it, here's how it delivers on the strategy that you're trying to, to deliver or the objective you're trying to meet. And when people start asking questions, which is typical, it's normal, it's expected. It also makes things better when people question and collaborate. But sometimes women will shrink from that thinking, oh, so it's not that good and they'll acquiesce. So really getting people to lean into that. Those are some of the challenges that professionally, you know, I've had to learn over the years and, and I continue to try and help other women lean into that too, so that there are more and more of us in the room doing that. Oh, that's, that's great advice. Absolutely great advice. Uh, Cause as we were talking before we hit the record button, we we're talking about a lot of times, you know, when uh, there's a job opportunity, women tend not to apply for it unless they know they can do 90 to 95% of those skills. Whereas a man um, will not feel that way. And they'll be like, Oh, you know, I think I'm good enough. I can do that. So we'd like to see collectively women, you know, yeah. If you have 70% of those skills, push yourself, apply for that job. You probably have more skills than you realize and can draw from your experience and grow into that, that kind of a role. So that's a, a fantastic conversation for a lot of people. Absolutely. And I have been fortunate enough in my career, honestly, to have early on really strong female supervisors in a lot of cases. So I, I was really fortunate in that regard to have champions for me through a lot of my career. So a lot of the challenge is finding opportunities to be that for other women because we're, we're still working our way up. Absolutely, absolutely. And we'll keep doing it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, we will. <laughs> now I'm gonna take you in a, a time machine Mm -hmm. and talk about the future. So what, if I ask you, what is your vision of your retirement? What do you see for your vision? Well, my vision is to travel the world. Nice. I want to see everything. Nice. <laughs> I'm starting now, but there's going to be a lot more to see, I'm sure, in my retirement. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, that, that is truly my passion. I am a lifelong learner. Uh, I come from a multi-generational teaching family. So I want to continue taking classes and exploring different cultures and seeing the world and all that it has to offer. And of course, I have to be able to pay for that. I know. <laughs> So because I have the operational mindset that I do, um, the way I look at retirement so that I can do that is to provide a wide range or a wide foundation for my retirement, which to me is diversification. So the more diversification that I can start to create sooner in my life, the broader that base will be, the more stable that foundation will be, and the more time I will have to travel around the world. Oh, plan. that's, that's great. That's great. I, I'm like vis, um, visualizing like all sorts of different iconic places to visit around the world. I'm like, oh, that excites me. That excites me. Absolutely. Every different culture, every different experience. And I, I have a, a laundry list of places already, but you know, who knows what else is to come. 
things that will be built or explored or found out there. I love it. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, great. 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 Oh, and because of what you do, you know, helping businesses, you know, how to set those goals and you know, what you need to do to achieve them. So I absolutely expect some postcards when we're both retired for where you are, where you're visiting. <laughs> Done. We can make that happen. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you today for joining me. Uh, This is absolutely fun to meet you again and talk through and learn more about your business. So I appreciate that you're here with us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Yeah. Yeah. We we love doing this. It's, uh, you know, I call it a labor of love. And I also want to thank our our guests who are listening uh, or watching. Uh, Thank you for joining us as well. Again, I'm Regina McCann-Hess, president of Forge Wealth Management. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Forge Wealth and on LinkedIn as Regina McCann-Hess. And my website is forgewealth.com. Thanks and make it a great day.